Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Um, I apologize again for the delay in posting a review for this Soraya Tech cast resin. Um, if you're not sure why, uh, take a look at our last review um, where we kind of explained a little bit, but basically some printer parts were very heavily delayed. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about what Soraya Tech is claiming for this cast resin. We have it here. Um, they only sell this currently through Amazon.com. Um, I believe they're waiting on probably some of our results <laughs> uh, to see whether or not this is a good formulation before they continue on and you know make it a little bit bigger. Anyway, what they claim here is a very easy to print, affordable, high resolution, and contains real wax for cleaner burnout. Castable resin for jewelers and small metal parts. Uh, castable resins are expensive and hard to work with, making it difficult for new and experienced users. Cast by Soraya Tech was developed as an affordable castable resin for jewelers and those who want to cast small metal parts. So there's really not a whole lot there. Um, my take from that is that they are just trying to make a good general resin. So again, like they mentioned, for jewelers, for small metal parts. Um, now what exactly is a small metal part? For jewelry, pretty self-explanatory. Small metal part is a little bit, you know, vague. Our channel mostly focuses on jewelry, so that is what we're going to be focusing on. Um, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about those print results. We like to use the same models throughout all of our testing because then we can directly compare between resins and get a very objective view of how well things are handling model to model. Um, anyway, so this is one of the first ones that we run. This is uh, you know, an array of hollow balls. They're very, very thin. The, the actual support structure of which are about 0.2 millimeters in size. And I'm happy to say that the resin printed very, very well. Um, this is one of the ones that a lot of the resins will struggle with if they're not particularly attuned to printing with you know, very filigree type models and this stuff came out exceedingly well. We usually run this model as kind of our exposure guideline. So this was the very first one. We based our, our settings off of the Elgu Mars Pro 2, I believe, um, because it has a monochrome screen and you know it's kind of just been the general one. Um, but how about we use the Prusa SL1S for this? So two and a half second base, or no, 25 second base layer for the sheet, the raft, and then a two and a half second exposure time for pretty much everything else. And you can see how well that worked out. It didn't. Uh, so we moved on. And what we do is we increase by one second every time until we get to the point where we start to see really good models. Then we go a little bit further and we see, you know, at what point can we start to trim back. Uh, this one is three and a half seconds exposure time, still 25 base. And this one's four and a half, just keeps getting better. And I would say four and a half was really good, but there was still some failure. And I can tell just by looking at the models themselves that they weren't fully developed. So we went on to five and a half seconds per layer with a 25 second base. And this turned out really, really well, like flawlessly well. Um, this is where things started to get a little complicated because the five and a half second worked really well for this model but not for all of these. Uh, we've had like this model here. This is one that we have multiples of and it's a vintage saddle ring with stone settings around the outside. It always seems to print really nice. I, I think that has a lot to do with the very solid base that it starts on. This one as well, this is very thin filigree. Uh, it turns out awesome. Whereas my snakes, they just kind of, they literally look like they got ripped to shreds. The the models are broken in a very apocalyptic kind of way. It's like a torn type of texture on them. I'm not sure why exactly. However, uh, I do have a theory. The theory is that the SL1S, which is the upgraded version of the SL1, and the tilt mechanism of the tank has been drastically sped up. Uh, in the previous version of this printer, it was about five seconds that it would take to dip. And what that does is it peels the FEP off of the bottom of the models, and then the Z-axis goes up, rather than the Z-axis lifting everything all at once and then dropping it back down. Um, when a printer does that, when it lifts up, that's where you start to introduce stepping, and if you don't have a very solid Z-axis, you'll start to see issues with your prints. Anyway, 
with the tilt bed being so dramatically fast, you know, it's, it's about two seconds now when it drops, I think that might be a little bit too aggressive. So I dialed it back from about two seconds to the five seconds. So that all said, despite those issues that are very unique to our printer, most likely, um, we have got some great print results. And we did definitely see an improvement in the overall print quality. So this resin definitely is a little bit more on the brittle side when it comes to the printing stage. After you've printed and cured and everything, it does feel pretty good, like just like a normal plastic almost. Have we seen better quality printing? I would say yes. So when I say that we are seeing better print quality in some other resins, by the way, uh, I'm talking about resins that are easily three times the cost. So bear that in mind when I say that. Um, the quality here is, is definitely excellent for the cost that you're paying for the resin. Considering that we've also seen really good results across the board, so with some of the heavier models and with some of the very light filigree models, the claim that it's just aiming to be a general good use resin is definitely holding up so far. So on to the casting results. Um, we're gonna go sprue these up and we'll be right back to give you those results. So we're back with the casting results. Um, I think we mentioned early on in the video that this was not our first attempt at casting with the Soraya resin. Uh, we did do one earlier, but we had um, some kiln issues. Basically the kiln got much too hot. And uh, when that happens, um, the investment starts to break down and you get cracking. When you pour the metal, the metal fills in those cracks and you get these thin like structures around where all of that cracking happened. Um, so that's something you can look out for if you ever do casting and you're trying to diagnose what the problem is. Um, we have talked about this considerably, well, in more depth in a previous video. So if you're interested, make sure you take a look at that one. But um, so aside from these casts, which were the failure ones, we've redone everything and we have a whole new batch, which thankfully the kiln did not overheat on and um, we can report some very, very good results. So let's go through all of these models one by one and uh, talk about what did work and what didn't work. First of all, we have this very, very thin filigree style. Um, I really don't know what this thing is. Brooch, ring, topper, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it's very, very thin. The overall structure is about 1.2 millimeters in terms of thickness. We did have some breakage, but that is actually from the the print. Uh, that's not from the cast. So it actually cast everything that broke flawlessly, which is really good to know. Um, something to note about these type of models is it's very important that you place these on the tree in a good spot. For something like this that's so thin, the best spot is right on the very top. And I've actually taken a photo of a bunch of these exact models uh, in order as they were descending up the tree. And you can actually see a noticeable degradation as it got further up. Anyway, um, so this one turned out flawless. This is a model that a lot, a lot of resins struggle with. Um, it's one that I hesitated to really do, but like 
it turned out incredibly well. So very, very impressed with that Soraya Tech. Good job. And then we have the classic um, saddle ring, the vintage saddle. It looks awesome. Um, I'm not seeing any, well, actually, I see, do see a tiny bit of surface texture, especially around edges. Uh, that seems to be a trend throughout a lot of them. Um, but all of the stone settings, all the seats are perfect. All of the holes where the stones go are awesome. There's no breakage. Oh, maybe there's a couple of breakage uh, for prongs, but nothing major. Like this is a very, very good cast by any stretch of the imagination. Moving on to the more engagement style ring. Uh, this one, again, pretty perfect. Uh, I do see some surface texture, but nothing that you couldn't take off with like a 400 grit sandpaper, 200 tops, or 220 tops. Uh, very, very good cast. See a little bit of surface texture in one of the stone settings, but you're probably gonna go in there with a burr anyway, so no big deal. Um, all the surface texture I'm seeing will easily polish off in a normal finishing process. Then we have this pave ring. This one, I, this, well, like others, this is a very challenging cast because there's, Oh, I couldn't even count how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven rows of stones going across by like pff, a billion. It's too many. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but most of the holes where the stones actually sit came out. Uh, there's a couple of them on the back that collapsed, or on the sides rather. But uh, I mean, this is a very challenging one for any resin. I believe the only resin that we've tried so far where it had perfect like perfection in this particular model was the Bluecast X1. And that stuff is meltable, so there is no way it could, um, there, there's no way that thermal expansion is an issue with that stuff. And that this came out, say 70% complete. And we have this round signet ring. Uh, this one had some layer shifting. That was an issue from the print. I just decided to throw it in anyway. But I mean, what I put in, I got out for sure. I can see everything turned out great. Uh, very little, again, surface texture around the edges, but nothing that's not manageable. And then we have the skull. Uh, this skull turned out pretty good. All the details are there, but there are some surface texture issues in some of the uh, details that you could not theoretically polish out because you'd be getting rid of the details around it. Uh, not ideal there, but I mean, it does kind of go with the aesthetic, so not the end of the world. Um, but overall, I mean, they're, they're perfectly done. There's no voids, very, very few issues to report with that. I would still call this a very, like a complete casting and I would try to polish it up anyway. And then lastly, we have the snake. Um, these snakes have been a problem with a lot of resins uh, in terms of the printing, because I print them upside down like this, so the head is supported, and then it's largely just the body making contact with the bed. Um, this one, I think it's partner. I always print them in two because they're earrings. Um, this The partner didn't work out. There's always a problem with the head, and um, this one did make it and all the details are just flawless. Like, I think this is one of the best snakes that I have cast to date. So to summarize the Soraya Tech cast resin, um, for the price, you're gonna be pretty hard pressed to find something better in terms of print quality and castability in the general space. So it doesn't perform exceptionally well when it comes to the filigree, and it doesn't perform exceptionally well when it comes to the heavy models, but it's got a very nice wide middle range, which I think is probably where the majority of models will fall. So overall on our ranked list, I will certainly be ranking this fairly high. Um, it doesn't quite reach you know, the, the peak of performance, but I don't really think that was the whole goal of this resin anyway. Um, and being that this is Soraya's first foray into making a castable resin, um, there's definitely room for improvement. And I have no doubt that they will be able to make that fairly quickly um, if they decide to. Uh, honestly though, I think this is a great, great place to, to start with. I would strongly recommend that you use this resin if you're in the more budget 
category space. And then as you kind of define more what you're going to be printing and casting, then maybe you can move up to something a little bit more specialized. TLDR, uh, great resin, great price, definitely recommend it if you're in the budget category. So that's all I really have to say about this resin. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're not already, please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned because we have uh, another two resins actually right there on the table that I'll be talking about in the near future. So make sure you don't miss those. I'll see you guys in the next one.